in their final series, it was just always Kai'Sa first pick. And the way they do it is they basically hold on for a, a flex pick for the mid and top and make sure that Dornby can get a lane where he has priority. That's kind of their bread and butter play and the way they draft. And there's nothing you can really ban away from him. Dornby has one of the widest champion pools or oceans, you should say, in the LPL. Always a very hard task as there's a bit of Thresh hovering here. Cold, someone who in the past has played a bit of Thresh, so going to add some priority to the bottom lane. I like taking the Thresh early because what we have seen is Thresh Athelios has been kind of the uh, always picked together. That's kind of been the hyper carry uh, dominating picks that we've seen. Yeah. And Thresh really provides a lot of support with the uh, Dark Passage for Athelios to get away from carry situations. FBX, however, going for a very tried and true strategy against the likes of Athelios, just taking that Olaf, making sure that Ragnarok makes uh, all of Thresh's abilities kind of moot. And a lot of crowd control, right? You've got the set in there that's technically a flex. Uh, you know, Doombie's played that in the past in the mid lane too, so we'll just see where it finally goes. You know that the jungle's going to be the Olaf, though, as you mentioned, so FPX playing off that for now to see what OMG respond with. We're looking for the global mid laner. No, in the end, it is going to be the Graves in the jungle for Aki. Okay, so OMG are siding more towards a standard front to back composition. They have double AD carry. Uh, mid lane can really be anything at this point. It just needs probably just a control mage. I guess Oriana is very much on the books. And this is yep. where things really get interesting. Because if you think about Doinby's champions in the last year, they were completely off the hook. His top three were Rumble, Predator, Galio, and he also played a <laughs> lot of Renekton. So yeah. a lot of his champions actually do extremely well into stock standard control mages. They can leave the lane whenever they want, and they actually have a lot of solo kill potential as well. We even saw the Kled come out in the Dimashia Cup. So I, I think this is going to be a little bit difficult for uh, Uming to actually pick a champion here. It's going to test him, right? You know, a fairly fresh mid laner debuted in the LPL last year. So against Doombi, there's a balancing act of experience versus current performance. At the very least, they're going to say no control mages for the mid lane for Doombi. They get rid of the Victor and also the Alistar, which was actually talked up on Cold's side. It's a part of the engage, part of the CC in chokes taken from FPX. Now, I like the Alistar ban away. That's what we've seen. Once you hit level 6, Alistar goes in, and there's not much that Thresh can do against Olaf and Alistar, which both cancel out crowd control. I like what FPX is doing here as well with their bans. We talked about OMG setting up for a front-to-back teamfight with double AD carry. You definitely yep. want to take care of all those front lines. So they're basically forcing Mew onto something like the Kennen. Um, and I, I think at this point, OMG probably has to hide their picks a little bit. Yeah, they are going to let Mew have the last pick and just make sure that I would say the weak point on their roster is protected. But at least we've been going on a pick we've seen in the past, right? His Galio was seen on the side of Rogue Warriors quite a bit. Next to his Pantheon, Wooming likes playing global mid laners. Uh, by the way, very sad fan vote at the bottom of your screen. 96% to FBX, <laughs> I just noticed. Uh, but Clement, FBX rounding out their roster as I speak of that. It's going to be Doombi on the Orianna, so the set pretty much to the bottom lane. Is Nuguri's debut game going to be on a Gragas top? Uh, Gragas is... This one's an interesting pick because we've seen Ziv play it and didn't get a lot of results right there. We also saw, saw some Flandre AP Gragas. So yep. this is a champion where I'm not totally set in stone on how effective it can be. It has a very, very high, uh, high bait floor, I would say, because it's very mm. hard to kill him in lane. And it's a lot about how your alt usage is going to be. If he can find that alt onto Aphelios, he could instantly in end the team fights. But quick trading would come from Renekton in that lane as well. It'd be a lane to watch with new debuting against Nuguri, uh, I should say. So at the end of the day, Renekton top here and the composition able to play globally towards bottom, towards top Clement. What do you want to see from OMG and how they utilize this? I think OMG's composition is actually incredibly standard. They should have, uh, if they don't fall to the level 2 cheese, they should have some pushing power into the bottom side. They do have a global. They can leave lane against the Orianna. Um, and it, it's pretty stock standard. You just always show up for the Drake fights. You're always there. Keep your formations tight. That's what they want to do. On the other hand, I think FPX's composition is a little bit more spicy. It's very dynamic. They can use that explosive cast to just bomb out the Aphelios and instantly kill yep. him. But there's a lot of execution involved in that type of a composition. I was going to say the execution part looks the hardest, right? There is a lot of anti-synergy if it doesn't line up. Explosive cast, shockwave, set showstopper as well. Let's not forget, can take them out of that. So everything needs to be nailed down to a T for FBX, especially since it is their very first game into the season. FBX have 
high expectations because of this one player on your screen on the left in his new jersey Nugri is meant to turn around the team that won the 2019 championship this is definitely what we want to see. It's been a lonely world without FPX. Last year in summer, they actually only finished in the seventh and eighth place, was eliminated in the first round of playoffs by V5. So FPX have lost a lot of their former glory. And it's, I would say it's not only about Nuggery's performance that we have to watch. It is about, hey, can Tan overcome his injuries that have held him down for quite a while? And can LWX and Chris actually show up in the 2v2, which they really weren't able to do whatsoever in summer? Can they? Will they? A lot of questions for FPX. OMG, a low bar set. They need to overcome that. Aki in the jungle. This is his first starting position. We haven't seen him since 2019 in the LPL. And even back then, you know, only a couple of games. So for OMG, as they run into the field, a big task, but one that's very achievable. On to Summoner's Rift, Clement. I hear the Jayos to start us off. And it's always great to have a live audience here. A lot of things returning to normal. We hope this definitely continues in the LPL. I've missed those Jayos so damn much. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, we also missed them because they came in as we came into Summoner's Rift. So never mind, you know, it's it's a good feeling to see a crowd out and about at the very least. Uh, we're in here, Shanghai, ladies and gentlemen, FPX and OMG. And as we mentioned, Nugri starting game now. Clement, let's just touch on those compositions. We have a look at runes at the same time. We were mentioning, you know, the top lane, especially Nogari picked the Gragas blind and you decided to go for this Renekton. I want you to walk me through this matchup a little bit more. So the Renekton should have the lane push priority early game, and it's just a pick that can't really be bullied out. I would say this is a defensive counter pick rather than an actual counter pick to what the Renekton uh what the uh what the gragas can accomplish in lane so it's more about protecting this and i still very much expect fbx to be playing around their bottom side of the map okay. um we have seen a lot of times if this set can find the early face breaker just like, like that, that. Yeah, the burn flash summoners. Forward. i mean eric's gonna take the last proc of the second skin exhaust goes out a little bit late actually and eric's still low Severin will heal him up, but in fact, FPX with a starting trade and Hex Flash now on Crisp is still a threat. Yeah, usually when this sort of a trade happens, you evaluate by if you can get the Flash out of the AD carry, because that really opens it up to jungle Ignite. games. Ignite, face breaker into the flay, cold flashes oh, away. Mind. First blood, Clement, shoot, baby, FPX all the way. Oh, wow. Chris doing a number right there. Cold did not anticipate the damage. Held onto his flash a little bit too long. Gets stunned up right there, and the Ignite finishes the job there. Great play from FBX. Uh, they're basically throwing me the caster curse. I was saying it's, it's still about the flash on the AD carry. Never mind, they had a new target. No, it doesn't matter in the end. You get first blood onto this Kaiser. Kaiser, a very big pick in the LPL right now around those early objectives. Oof. She's going to have a lead, and LWX and Chris, this is what we wanted to see. A stronger laning phase and less mistakes from what was a world-class duo. Yeah, a very good start, and this is a huge reason why, you know, FPX kind of fell off in the summer split, is they weren't really able to get much out of their bottom lane. It couldn't really push because the picks there weren't available anymore, and it just felt like even if Doinby had priority, he had nowhere to go to. So seeing yeah. them off with a strong bottom lane and the fact that they picked Olaf specifically to gank that bottom lane is definitely a great start for FBX. Bit of a disaster for OMG. Double Longsword is now what they're facing. They've got the utility of uh, Biscuits on the side of LWX as well. Tien's even hovering the bottom side. So FPX, as you said, Clement, the draft wants to play towards this bottom lane. They've been set up for success even before we start talking about the jungle pathing. Yep, definitely is the case right now. And you can see this is a very difficult lane situation for OMG to walk into. They don't really have control of the wave. They have to suspect that Olaf is around this side of the jungle. And uh, they're going to have to play extremely, extremely timid. Safely in lane, keyword. Jungler's now towards opposite sides of the map. In fact, Tien backed first with a pickaxe. So, of course, we're going to see that Gore Drinker come through as the first Mythic. While it is a bit of a slower clear from Aki... Uh, with Scuttle Crabs traded across. He goes back too and picks up boots and a long sword. So jungler's at even standpoints, but now the next clear comes through from Tien, who's going to be starting top to bottom. Yeah, and uh, once again, I, I do have to mention uh, about the bot lane dynamics that we've seen 
Most of our Kaisas, Please. actually all of our Kaisas so far in the LPL have been going for the pure AD build. There hasn't been on the on-hit AP build at all. And most likely we have been seeing the Kraken Slayer into the likes of the Collector. So that's a combo with lethality. And if you get ahead, it actually snowballs incredibly hard. And that's something that we do have to pay attention to. And I think it is the backbone of FPX's strategy. Yeah, I think the 5% people misunderstand that that isn't executed. It's pure damage and it's a pretty insane second item when you also get the mythic passive, uh, you know, from the Kraken Slayer. So uh, feels really good at the moment on these 80 carries and we already said he was set up for success. FPX now moving down. TN level 5, FPX Doombi is the same. Uh, Wooming doesn't have ultimate, so this just looks like a starting drag and even on, I believe, a bit of vision being denied. Yep, we did see uh, Uming actually pick into this. Uh, typically, the Orianna is considered somewhat of a counter pick. Spike yeah, is in Clement. Oh, Spike's a little bit early. TN still gets it, though. New has come on in for the TP. While well, the hero's entrance achieved while Wooming hits five. Doombi does not have Shockwave and LWX with no killer instinct. He's dead. Crisp about to die as well. They're giving the kill to Eric. OMG fight back right in front of the big beast. Oh, that was so well done by Eric. He starts off with the perfect Gravitum, and they also play the 5v4 because Nuggery uh, wasn't really there into the fight whatsoever. Um, kind of interested what happened right there. He's, but they find the 5v4 teleport, and Clement. they get the two kills. He's used teleport, so we'll have a quick look at the replay to see if it was cancelled or he just came back to lane while you did the complete opposite. So Nuggery stays in that top lane while you've given a kill over to Eric. You balance the favors in these 80 carries. And Aki now has a lead, despite being 10 CS down in the jungle. Yeah, very well played right there. I hope we get the replay, but right now it is just a pure win on New's side. He actually picks up the entire minion wave, so good on his part. Um, yeah, it actually just looks like uh, the Renekton does the teleport a lot earlier. This was a much more coordinated and pre-planned move coming in from OMG. They land in the middle of the entire formation for FBX. They break them apart with the Gravitum. And honestly, props to New. Like, he got in oh. the thick of things really, really quickly and gave Galio a great landing space. To confirm, Nugri actually teleported to lane. He saw the play and was like, ah, oh, well, it's too late now. So I'm just going to go back to the top wave. Pushes it out, but New's there in time. So he didn't miss much, uh, too much CS. And it's even footing up in that top lane. So a, a big win for OMG to equalize the gold out when there were already a thousand down after that first blood. Yeah, and I do want to mention the uh, the synergy between these players. So what typically happens uh, when the LPL imports LCK players is that they can't scrim together before the season uh, online, but they usually haven't met in person. So that's the kind of interesting thing that happens around with these players is they actually probably have a lot of scrim time together, but when it's actually in the flesh and you're sitting together on the stage, it's a bit of a different dynamic. True. I mean, we've seen, you know, in the back end, we've heard teams have really good scrims, but then they come onto the stage and it's like, well, it's just not translating well. Excuse me. Up in this top lane, watching Nuguri trade a little bit. He's pushing the wave once again. Tien's up here, so he feels safe. Tien actually hovering around for the start of this Rift Herald, Clement. He's been on top of these objectives as they come alive. And Tien will just start this one up while OMG are moving their bot lane towards mid. Ooh, this is the fabled LPL play. Everybody willing to rumble for the Herald. We see all the members actually converging right here. And uh, OMG actually pretty interesting doing a double take back into the bot lane just to push yeah. this out. I, you know I what actually they didn't like have? this. Go, go ahead, what? go ahead. Oh. I actually like this, and I wish a lot more LPL teams did this, because a lot of times with early Heralds, you're getting 320 gold, and if you just get two platings on the bot lane anyway, you kind of equalize that out completely. So uh, I do wish a lot more teams actually just, just did this fake out play and make teams over invest into the Herald. You know what I was going to say? I was going to say they actually didn't have the hero's entrance as well. So it's nice for OMG to realize that and a key engage ultimate that won them the last fight and just pull back and go to this wave, as you mentioned. So now that Wooming has that available, let's see if the next play in succession turns into something. I'm, of course, talking about the Mountain Dragon in a minute 40, uh, which could be pretty great for both of these teams as extra stat lines. Uh, but Clement, we're, we're getting towards, you know, that 10 minute mark. We've seen a bit of action already. OMG have a gold lead, but of course the Herald you mentioned, where do you want to see it put? Well, I, I definitely think this is FBX's uh, chance to kind of break the Drake chain uh, that OMG could potentially set up. 
We mentioned this in draft phase. OMG is the team that wants to play front to back. They want to control all the drakes and kind of have that snowballed up. Even though FBX did get the first one, it's always nice to delay the timer on OMG even further a bit. So I think they're going to be holding on to this Herald for now and just try to play a fort when the time does come and everyone is converging in the river. At the very least, that'll be 50 seconds away, so we'll, we'll see. Uh, at this point, not towards our first Mythics yet. We're going to keep track of items. For any of our newer audience members, you know, we have seen the same consistent items on most carries, but if that changes, we'll let you know. Uh, we're expecting to see the Gale Force come out of Aki on the Graves, which has been the go-to. Of course, the uh, Gore Drinker for Tien on Olaf. Uh, but there could be some changes. We'll see the Protobelt onto Wooming. Uh, Clement, anything across the item board that you want to see that you think is interesting so far? We do have a tank Gragas up in top yep. lane this time. Yep, that is true. We have seen Flandre play the uh, AP Night Harvester Gragas, which I feel like yeah. is very fun. You get uh, the Night Harvester cooldown actually is for each individual champion. So you can actually put 625 damage just with the ultimate with Night Harvester. Really, really good first damage. However, we do have to come back to what's happening on screen right now. FBX actually do a fake out. I, I love this play because look at the bottom lane. OMG thought they would be contesting in the bottom side. Invested so much vision down there and FBX does a straight fake out. Just goes to the top lane and takes up the first brick. It'll get a charge on the second turret as well, right? Aki getting the dragon. That's the only extra objective achieved. But Nogri up here be able to push the wave. Half health on this inner turret. First turret blood given over to FBX. That's the gold lead back in their pocket. And that's oh. actually going to be first item across the board for Nuguri and most likely for Doombi as well. Yeah, this, this play is really, really amazing from FBX. This is a play I don't think they would do if they didn't have first Drake. This is basically saying that, hey, you know, you want to play Drake's, but we got the first one, so we don't mind you getting on the board with a Drake of your own since, hey, we've already opened up the map enough. So very interesting macro decision right there. Actually gives them the gold lead right here and right now, and they're not behind on the Drake's anyway. We're also heading towards an Ocean Soul, Clement. Uh, and just looking at compositions again, you know, FPX a composition that you said was harder to execute, but you look across their ulties and how they can play these fights, maybe a little bit more extended than OMG uh, in, in some opinions. So, you know, I think beneficial dragon for both teams. But, you know, we're going to get there first. We're four minutes away. And at the very least, gold back to even because turrets were traded in the end. So this has been a, what would you call it? You know, like a loosely even early game after first blood was given over yeah definitely still very much uh you know up in the air between uh these two teams right here and um just looking at it the way these team fights are going to work is i think fbx are going to try to break up the formation they actually have a number of targets they can Hang focus on. down right here box and put down with dark passage explosive cast not used yet clement i'm gonna interrupt because eric's getting blown away Remember, this is Tank Graga, so Nugri's not going to die. They flash over the wall, and Tien is very, very <laughs> angry. With Nugri, they run in. Eric's against the wall, and out he goes. Nugri picks up his first kill of the LPL, while Cold is getting hit against the turret. Undertow number two connects. The death sentence might not be that for FPX, as he goes golden, but a barrel at the ready. And they did a barrel roll. This time, Tien picks up the other killers. Bottom lane as well. Oh. FPX, the Phoenix on fire. Chris doesn't die. What the hell's happening top lane as Aki almost goes down as well? That is so insane. FPX went out on the top side and out the bot side at the Woo. very same moments. That is never supposed to happen in League of Legends. You can't win both sides at the same time, but FPX managed to do it. I felt like Cold probably was a little over ambitious pulling Eric into the fray against the likes of Nugri. Nuggery is very, very tanky at this point. He really isn't going down whatsoever. You can see Eric coming in, but just not doing enough damage. And the crowd control duration is so long that Eric can't really get much damage out before the entire rotation comes in on the side of FPX. They just clean this one up very, very crisply. No pun intended. And uh, unfortunately, just a little bit of an overextend from cold into an area where they didn't have vision. Nicely set up by Nuguri. I know everyone's getting their raccoons out, Clement. But Nuguri on the board here to start us off. 1-0-1. One, one. Already has his first item. We've got our Gore Drinker for Tien as well, who rampaged down for OMG. Decision making across the board was great because LWX picked up another kill in the bottom lane. And he's almost towards that collector. So FPX right now in a very comfortable position. Because Tien, even on the other side of the map, doesn't care. FPX looks like they're taking whatever. Yeah, they're definitely going to run this top side, and in these small skirmishes, they do have a lot more, I would say, uh, compositional strength compared to just the 5v5 situation that we've seen 
if OMG want to take these small skirmishes, a lot of the times they're actually going to be lacking the frontline protection that they want to set up for the Aphelios. So going into the jungle is always going to be a very difficult task, and they really shouldn't do it unless they have the Galio. Oh, look at that prediction for the death sentence. Nicely oh, done the flight oh, into the box. Nogri with the explosive cast flashes away because news here as well. But OMG now uh, on the chase. This is a bit of yakety sax. Nogri very low, end of the line, collateral damage. He's alive. It's not going to be used by Aki. He just walks out after four people <laughs> chased him down. Oh, how does he get away from that? That was absolutely criminal play. 1v4 uses the happy hour to keep himself alive. And we do have to mention that was the recent Gragas buff that he does get more HP regeneration after using his abilities right there. Keeps himself alive, forces the overextension, and they should find some tower damage in the likes of Dornby on the top side. But Clement, how sad would you be when you just pull off like this sick mad life hook from Cold with the prediction of the body slam and your team can't kill this Gragas and it doesn't turn into a montage play because it doesn't count at the end of the day. But a lot of ultimates burned down and OMG now getting chased down. Crisp after Eric through the mid lane. FPX still in that very comfortable position with another Ocean Dragon, or sorry, the first, spawning shortly. And this is something we do have to mention because you do need a source of grievous wounds uh, grievous wounds if you want to deal with this tank ragus he's building almost a, a pure hp stack and if you don't have that grievous wounds he's just going to heal back so much in the entirety of the team fights we have to mention that colt is not running the ignite so they're still lacking a source to deal with nuggery wave clear trying to be used here mid uh speaking of nuggery he's towards the bottom lane for now it looks like FPX might be grouping up around this, or at least transitioning to the dragon. All outer turrets just about to be taken down with Nuggery, moving into demolish range. And FPX, again, the map continues to be theirs. Gold lead just about at 3,000 gold at 16 minutes in the game, and the dragon free too. Yeah, no answer coming in from OMG at this point. I feel like what they're going to do is just kind of wait on those Aphelios items to be continuing to build up. We have seen the Renan's Hurricane um, coming in from uh, Aphelios as the yep. uh, second item of choice. And yeah, it's just gonna be a slow game. I think OMG know that they're kind of on the back foot and the way they have to get back into it is likely uh, having setting up a very big Baron fight and just trying to turn the match there. I was gonna say, you know, utilizing Wooming. We saw one good ultimate, but Wooming hasn't been able to engage because FPX have been so slippery in these small skirmishes and Wooming hasn't been in position. He's got the proto belt. He does have a tiny bit of damage, but, uh, you know, Clement, as we're getting towards these second items, Wooming has to make a move. There has to be some point where they shut down FPX, like you said, potentially in front of a Baron fight, potentially in front of one of these small corridors where OMG can make use of their easy to execute composition you set up. I think the way Wooming's actually going to work in this team fight is he's not going to be using his ultimate that much. He's probably just going to be standing around Eric and making sure that yeah. anyone who closes in on him is taunted out. However, there is a lot of interesting tools on FBX's side to kind of break those formations apart. Chiefly, I'm going to be looking at Crisp and the Showstopper. If he can slam Ooming onto Cold and Eric's face, that's almost going to be lights out instantly. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of health there to play with as FBX get yet another turret. Wooming here to pick up the scraps and you know a lot of people saying that's all folks fpx showcasing here 18 minutes into the game and we'll just keep soldiering on this this setup now clement is is an important part to talk about because you've got gragas who's not really a split pusher but nugri sticking in this side lane and fpx are moving throughout the vision control they have in the top side there's nothing new can really do against him uh, we have seen some Graguses when going up, uh, I'm sorry, Renekton's going up with the Gragas. They do try to go for Blade of the Ruin King just to okay. be able to chip him down. But without that item, you're not really doing much against the Gragas. And he's going to be allowed to roam first on these scenarios and just put a lot of pressure. This game really looks very reminiscent to uh, the IG games that we've seen where Rookie just dominates the lane with the Orianna, takes over the jungle. And we have to remember that this is still very much a uh, zero-sum jungler meta where if your jungler gets taken over, you're just never coming back from him. There's no no yeah. no backup EXP. So this is sort of where the slow strangulation does start. And for OMG, it's kind of just a waiting game at this point. You need those three items, hopefully onto the likes of Eric. Uh, the third one typically does go for the Infinity Edge, get that 60% crit and uh, get that extra crit damage as well. 
And I will say, also, the collector second for Aki is still going to be a big deal, right? You know, you talked about jungle pressure and level advantage. Aki has actually maintained that despite FPX having the lead. So this Graves has been farming nicely. And, you know, if you get the pick onto LWX, if you find Doombi with Graves, he's so busted at the moment. And he, he can just find the pick that leads to the surprise Baron, that leads to the following fight. A, a player you have to keep your eyes on there. But across the board, while we've mentioned items, just note that the Renans is picked up for Eric, Collector for LWX, and OMG waiting patiently for FPX to step into their lair. I love this move. They paid very good attention to the where the waves are on the map, and they're basically goading FPX to go in. But we have to remember, the Baron isn't up just yet. FPX, they really don't have a reason to step in and check right now, and I like how they're taking this. They're playing it very, very slow. They're having Nuggery shove the wave the entire way in before they finally rotate over. I was going to say, until now, right? Because Baron literally just spawned and Eric started this up. I mentioned his Renan's Hurricane for a reason because they do that fast. They keep aggro going, but Baron resets eventually with Tien waiting in the brush. Undertow connects onto two people. This could be a choker's TP comes through as well. Showstopper, the Facebreaker at the ready. Wooming's ult comes on in as Nugri's bounce castle into the back line. Aki getting chased by Tien, who Ragnaroks and spins to win. The Shockwave as well. The choke fight initiated by Fun Plus Phoenix. Wooming the only one that's left. And FBX tear them apart. They get absolutely everything in that team fight. Very well played. And we could see it was all about switching the aggro around these targets. They split the fight up perfectly. There was no front to back right there. Aki was getting chased down by a very, very mad berserker on the right side with Kien. And also in the front lines, uh, Nuggery was doing a great job soaking up all of that damage. LWX and Doin B were essentially untouched in that entire team fight. And that's what we were mentioning. If FBX are able to break apart the team fight, pick up the carries behind, uh, who aren't behind their front line, then it's actually pretty a uh, pretty easy fight on their side. Look at this bait from Tiang Clement. Walk me through it, because yeah. this just looked cleanly executed. Definitely was the case right there. I love what Tian was doing, just breaking up the graves, making sure he couldn't put out damage behind his front line. And on the left side, look what Nuggery was doing right there. He's taking up all of the damage, and the carries are essentially untouched throughout this entire thing. Still no Grievous Wounds coming out on the side of OMG. They're going to have a very hard time actually killing Nuggery, especially when he's going to be running double Ocean Drake. Oh, oh God. Um, LWX just solo killed it. Aki's like, boys, don't worry. I'll trade you off. Collateral damage doesn't kill him. Aki walks away. LWX, Clement, I forgot to mention to our chat and our beautiful viewers today, he needs seven more kills to get to kill number 1,500. He is now Ooh. two kills away from hitting that milestone that many 80 carries in the LPL do not hit. That was a pretty cool play, and I definitely want to see the replay of that one. He just actually just walks underneath tower, lands the W first, and in goes the assassin build Kaisa. Oh my god, that was damn quick. That was, the Q uh, goes yeah. down, he gets the full channel right there. He does have the uh, the bonus on the Akathian rain, and finishes it off with two auto attacks. I was going to say, damn quick, yeah, club it was, but he's super fed at this point. He wants these two more kills in this game. Give it to him now, because FBX up 10k gold, hitting on the base like it's, you know, a tree. I don't know. I don't really like hitting things. I'm a pacifist. As inhibitor in the mid lane goes down, and now FBX looking at the bottom lane going to be a very difficult fight for OMG to hang on to. I think what they have to do is kind of pincer FBX, maybe try to catch him out on the left side, be the aggressive ones for a change, um, and don't let FBX's formation actually coalesce here. They have three man in the base, two man coming in. Oh, but with this minion wave, they can't cut them off anymore. Explosive cast sends uh, Aki back to base, and the minion wave, as you mentioned, did in fact cut them off. It's FPX is a five-man unit with Baron running in and LWX forward first. Q does half the hell. And Eric's like, what the heck is this? Shockwave brings in Cold. A bit of a barrel roll on you and Chris, but having it out the support does more damage than the Renekton does. Body slam once again. Aki out with the first Nexus turret going down. Moonlight Vigil with Infernum is good. And maybe that stops FPX for now. That's a good amount of damage coming through. That one ultimate nearly took everyone to half HP, so... We have seen the power of Aphelios Thresh. I think the best game that we've seen was actually from Rogue Warriors uh, when they played this composition. Looked extremely good. 
And you do have to you do have to mention that this is the premier uh, third item carry right now in the LPL. If you let him get to the infinity edge, he can one white uh, just one shot white your teams. So that's something that I think FBX uh, does have to keep in mind of, and I think they're going to try to close before well. that. Do they, Clement? Because Aki just wants to get back, but you know oh. what? Everyone's here. The explosive cast. Nuguri welcomes himself to the LPL as LWX now one kill away. OMG into the choke, trying to get the kill. New is going down fast. One more hit, and it. there you go. Kill number 1500 for LWX. As he's going to add 1501 for the triple. And it's all going downhill once again for OMG. 11th in the LPL. Everybody remembers LWX for making history, not dying a single time in the finals of 2019. Now he inches forward to the top 10 kill list in the LPL as well. One of the greatest slayers there ever has been. 25 minutes that game took Clement. 25 minutes. Chat upset because they wanted to see it go a little bit longer, but you know, this series is spiced up. It's heated up in a great way. And the man on your screen debuting had a very solid game, along with the rest of FPX standing strong. Definitely very exciting to see what Nuggery was going to bring to the table. And I think that's probably a very good picture of what we will see Nuggery doing on this FPX team. He is going to be, a lot of times, in my opinion, going to be on that blind pick. He's going to play something safe. He's going to play for the team fight, And he's going to play for, basically, priority and moving around the map to assist the other parts on the map. That's what I think FPX really needs. And that's also why I think the con uh, thing didn't work out as well. I think Nuggery does have to be more of a follow Doinby player going around this time. <laughs> I was going to say, but at least, you know, like whatever player he becomes in the end or whatever player he turns into on this FPX roster, a lot of people wanted to see him come out of the gates rolling. Like the performance of Nuggery from Worlds, the performance of Nuggery that people have seen in the regular season of the LCK, that's what they needed on this FPX lineup. And a lot of questions going around. Remember, Clement, you said it. Does the shoe fit? Good game one to really start testing that and to move us into the direction of a yes. A lot of questions answered in this game. FBX's bottom lane still definitely does have it. Crips had a great early start to this one, getting mm -hmm. those early kills. And I also think that their mid game was pretty well played. The way they opened the map and made sure that Ro uh, excuse me, OMG never actually got to play front to back team fight around the Drakes was masterfully done. Even when uh, OMG did set up around the Drake, they actually just gave them the Drake. They didn't want to contest in a situation that might be unfavorable to them, and they just kept on the kind of skirmish game and snowballing the jungle away from the likes of Aki to finish that one down. So I think this was a, a much more like rotational based game and a very clear idea on how to shut down OMG through the draft phase by banning out most of their front lines. Man, can I just say, on another topic, Nuguri's base damage, I mean, Gragas' base <laughs> damage is uh, <laughs> very high. I mean, that's tanked for you, right? You know, the, the game was only 25 minutes long. So naturally, with the Sunfire Aegis, or Aegis, I'm sorry if I say that wrong, uh, you know, there was a lot of damage in the first 10, 15 minutes of the game, but LWX tops it there. He gets the most damage, and he also gets 1,500 kills in his career. So another congratulations, but... Yeah, Clement, this is a great sign for FPX. You know, we wanted to hype them up. We wanted to say that FPX were going to be improved with their new top lane addition, but the whole map was just playing better, which is a much better start to the season. It definitely has been, you know. We talked about FPX's woes so much. A lot of people kind of accuse them of being a specific meta team, and I yeah. think there has been some truth in that from the 2020 but for us, the most important thing is definitely just monitoring how Tien does and how the bot lane does. If those three lanes, um, those three players can step up to the plate and perform the way they did in 2019, I still think we have the top three team in our hands. Tien especially, right, with the wrist injury. Good to see him performing well. But ladies and gentlemen, that's only one game. A series is a series, and game two of it will be continuing right after this.